After recording and editing my response to City Tutoring's 25 minute spiel, I got hit with a sense of how do you argue with someone about something that they just lack understanding of what it actually is they are trying to argue. And so the best way to make my point to you, City Tutoring, is with proof. I am challenging you to a math duel. You can choose any field of math you want. We get an expert to choose a niche specific topic that we both don't know anything about and that doesn't demand too many prerequisites. So it's a level playing field. The expert gives us a brief and also writes an exam. Then we have a set period of time of your choice, for example a day or even a few hours. I know you're a busy man and we learn as much as we can about that topic using the brief. You can use any resource you like and I will exclusively build and take courses on Math Hub. Then we take the exam. This way I can prove to you the effectiveness of having a system with its hands in your brain 24-7 and if I lose then I will tattoo mathematician to mathematician somewhere on my body. Oh, and also I will happily duel any other math YouTuber too, because I'm starting to wonder just how mathematical some of them are. It feels like there is a lot of script reading going on currently. And for some of them, I have questions about whether they actually write these themselves. In part, I'm making this response to City Tutoring because the issues touched on are actually not so much about the models in Silicon Valley, but more about the role of the brain in math, and also the realities of math, education and research. And these are really interesting, but difficult ideas to give level-headed, bias and ego-free scrutiny to. Oh, and I also want to say that I think it's important to keep our feet on the ground. As best as I can tell, neither of us are mathematicians in the sense of doing research. I'm just a math student that thinks a lot about thinking. And this is important to remember when listening to our respective arguments. No machine can replace creativity. To be able to make an actual argument for this, you need to have some definition of creativity, or at least a model of thinking. I certainly didn't have one in the past when I was going on about this je ne sais quoi that humans possess, and how this will be untouchable. Mathematicians themselves are now saying, Soon after ChatGPT came out, I started traveling around the country telling people, oh no, there's this new thing people are going to need to learn to be more creative because that's the only thing that the AI can't do. I don't say that anymore because now I've seen that the AI can actually come up with lots and lots of ideas. I very strongly recommend watching this video. Essentially, as explained in here, large language models are high level layers of artificial neurons in a neural network that have connections between them. And these connections have different weights. You feed in an input, run it through, compare the output to what you actually want, and then back propagate the result through the network using calculus to adjust the weights on the connections. And you repeat this over and over again, ending up with a big list of weights. And obviously there's a lot of other clever things that go on. But Jeffrey Hinton says that this is a very good model of what is going on in the human brain when we understand things. What we don't yet know, however, is how the brain decides to change its weightings, whatever that means in the context of this model of neural networks. You see, if I say to you right now, let G be a group, a mental picture just formed in your brain, assuming that you've met groups before. And that is a picture that has been constantly refined and altered throughout your interactions with math. It will look very different to when you first learned about the concept of a group, but over time, as you see it more and more in different settings, your mental image converges on something. It's an iterative process of tweaking and refining as you encounter questions and examples where your current mental model misleads you a bit. But perhaps city tutoring, you might not even be in a position to engage with that argument because maybe you're thinking that the idea of accurately modeling the human brain is ridiculous in itself. And if that's the case, I want you to think about this. We can very accurately model the nature of the universe and life. When you get on an airplane, worry-free, sipping on your Spanish wine. You've got complete confidence that our models of the laws of physics are sufficiently good to get you up in the air, across the earth, and down again. Or past this, it's a very, very long list of things in the universe which we've modelled with iteratively more sophisticated theories, producing incredible accuracy with experimental results. Regardless of whatever is actually going on, or if that even means anything anyways. So then why not the brain? What is the reason to believe that the brain is so special to be resistive to such a model? As Jeffrey Hinton pointed out, in different settings, humans have a long history of thinking they're special and being proven wrong. And so to me, clinging on to the argument that the brain cannot be modelled well, it's just another reflection of this. But 
you're absolutely right. That trust to a mathematician is paramount. Rigor is non-negotiable. But the arguments floating around at the moment are, okay, an expert can see that it's outputting good content consistently. But if I didn't already know that content, I've got no way of knowing it's correct. This is not going to be the case for much longer. And this is because of proof verification systems. You can see already that systems are using lean and this one got a silver in the IMO. And as to your point about the IMO, the reason why people get excited about it is because the intention of the questions are to reward original mathematical thinking. That's the point. And so to say that it's not impressive because it's just regurgitating what billions of humans have done in the past, it doesn't make sense to me because in theory, those questions are unique in a sense. Yes, maybe you can find lots of questions with similar tricks or ideas required, but then a lot of the human participants are using their exposure to things that humans have done in the past and building off of that. So I don't see the difference here. And now to my point about funding in research. My intention behind saying hop on the train or get left behind, it's not scare tactic. It's just the inevitable truth that funding shapes the landscape. It is ultimately something mathematicians have to think about when choosing what to work on. And it's basic common sense that people who have doubled, tripled or increased even more than that, their output past yours will see the funding flow towards them. Similar to the calculator, as soon as it's invented, you stop hiring people in your team to do manual, laborious, slow calculations. But this brings me onto the calculator analogy, because I think it's been a bit misinterpreted. My intention was not a comparison in the sense of you just press a few buttons, you get an output, and you know it's correct for sure. Even though, as I've discussed, your issues of validating correctness will not be around for much longer. My point in comparing it to the calculator is it's a shift in the landscape that is unimaginable a while before it happens. And so I'm not saying that the shift will look like this. My point is that it's so hard to think about what it could look like if you go back hundreds and hundreds of years and tell someone that you could put in two 10 digit numbers, press a button and instantly see their product, you'll blow some minds. As for what it will look like in a hundred years, of course, I don't know. But this brings me on to what do I have in mind? What would I like to see? And it's not, as you say, a friend or companion. What I would like to see is something that knows how I think but also how loads of other people process and think, and it has access to all of archive. I can speak my thoughts to it, and then maybe it can see that in a different area of maths, the way of thinking about the problem was very similar, somewhat isomorphic, whatever that means in this context, and then it can throw ideas back at me. And so it's fostering creativity of the system alongside your own brain. Most likely it will look completely different, but ultimately, humans have a deep-rooted desire to innovate and adapt or perish is a fact of life. I mean, that's the world. But as a human, this kind of innovation should light you up.